Good evening, Cranky Motorsports fans. I told you I was going to get back to some tractor content soon, and I am. This old girl I bought, I think it was the first tractor in 2021 that I bought. I think. It was like in January. I bought it from a guy from the Sears Suburban Backyard Tractor Club Facebook group. Um, and he actually delivered it to me. It wasn't running when I got it. Turns out the carburetor was messed up and a few other things. It really still needs a new carb. And I actually have a new carburetor for this, a brand new um, Amazon one that I will probably put on. But I kind of have some big plans for this tractor. Now this is a, I believe it's a 1976 ST12. It's either a 76 or a 77. Though I'm not sure they made an ST12 and 77. I can't remember. There's I know a lot of stuff about Sears tractors, but I have so much other crap crammed in my head that I often forget. So it's either a 76 or a 77 ST12. So it has a, a 12 horse Tecumseh flathead motor, but this one has the geared starter on it, which I like better than the starter generator motors. These ones tend to run really, really well. Um, the old style starter generator motors tend to run pretty well too, but these ones run better. I don't know why. The charging system on these is a little bit better. It doesn't have the voltage regulator with the generator. It has just a standard rectifier and a charging coil underneath the flywheel, much like an Onan has. So changing out your rectifier and things like that to make the charging system work on these is a lot easier. Now my plans for this tractor, I'd been talking about putting Ghost Grill on one of my yellow and white tractors for a while. This is gonna get a Ghost Grill. So I have two ghost grills that I took off, both off of 1970 Suburban 12s, I believe. And I wanna basically make this a yellow and white tractor with a ghost grill. And I think one of my front end loaders, the one I bought off my buddy Hugh, or Pacific Drum 95, as his name is on YouTube, or Hugh Drums, uh, Hugh, I think it's Hugh Drums on YouTube. Um, I might put that loader on this tractor. And the main reason I've been thinking about that the SS18 that my loader is currently on, I need to do a little bit of maintenance to that motor and stuff. I need to do plugs and a few other things. The, the motor runs phenomenally well. The rear end on that tractor has come loose a couple of times and I've drilled out the bolts and tapped them and put new bolts in. <clears throat> but the crummy thing about running a loader on a Sears tractor or any garden tractor, if you beat on the loader a lot, and just naturally using the loader beats on the tractor, but especially if you're trying to rock, you know, pull rocks out of the ground and stuff like that, it tends to loosen things up on the frame. The mounts loosen up, the transmissions tend to loosen up. Um, Curtis Chaput, who's on the Sears Suburban page, he also, um, I think Toxic Redneck is his name on YouTube. I think so. I forget what his username is on YouTube, but he has, uh, an SS16. He's had a bunch of diesel SS16s and you know they just get beat up when you use them with a loader. So this tractor is pretty fresh. Uh, it hasn't been abused to the best of my knowledge. Everything on it looks like it's in good shape. So I think I'm going to take the loader off the SS18 and put it on this tractor and before I do that I'll go through I'll probably change a bunch of the bolts out put in grade 8 bolts on the rear end and stuff but I want to put a ghost nose on this tractor. So I figured it won't take me too long to do that. I might as well get started on that tonight, swap over the nose. And then before I put the loader on, I will uh, change the carburetor out on this thing, make sure it's all tuned up well. I did a tune up on this and put a, a Briggs fuel pump on it a while ago, put a new spark plug in it and it runs really good. It'll need a drive belt before I put a loader on it because I can see this one's getting worn out. But I'll just make this a nice tractor with uh, with a front end loader on it and I'll make it look cool. So that's my plan with this. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. There's some other stuff I never put back on this. There's a cover that goes down here on the side of the frame. There's a cover that goes here on the engine. I haven't put those back on yet, but all part of the plan. And I love it when a plan comes together. Normally I would put a whole bunch of snappy music in here so that you're not bored watching me work on stuff without sound. However, the last couple videos I did where I put sound recordings in there or songs that even though I downloaded them from a royalty-free site, I still got dinged for copyright infringement and I ended up not being able to monetize those videos. 
Ironically, one of those was the video where I drove down to Cape Cod to pick up a tractor for Matt, our fearless leader, and it got a lot of views and I didn't get any money for it. Well, I got the grill and the hood swapped over. There are a few things that are going to still need attention. So these newer tractors, the 70, 76 and up tractors, let me make sure I can be in frame here. Nothing like putting a video together where I'm trying to show you something and you can't see me. So the 76 and newer tractors normally have two metal brackets that bolt on the side of the frame and come up on the outside of the dash because these dashes don't have any hooks to hold the hood shut. Somebody took these ones off. Um, this dash has been repaired once. Somebody fiberglassed the inside of this and cut it shorter and redrilled the holes in the frame. So somebody took off the side latches and never put them back on. Luckily, I keep those because I've done multiple dash swaps on the Onan tractors and put a fiberglass dash on that has the hooks on it. This dash is nice enough. I'm going to probably leave it, but I do have to put those hooks back on. The other thing is this firewall, which only really needs to be here for this one bracket that holds the side panels on the ST12. These motors don't get nearly as hot as the Onans do, but this is there as a firewall between the battery and the engine. This is in the way. So I just did what my cousins and I call murmuring it, where you basically take either a big hammer or a big wrench and just go mur, 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 and bend it. So I murmured the firewall for now just to get it out of the way, but I'm gonna have to come in with a cutoff wheel, cut the sides of this off and cut the top off so it clears everything. I'll still leave most of it in there, but for now, I don't really want to mess with it. I just bent it. So um, I don't have a brace on this thing either. Again, because these dashes don't have the hole in the top for the brace for the hood, or for the grill rather. So I'll have to make a bracket from here, probably either to the firewall, maybe attach it on this other bracket that the side, um, side pieces connect to. So I'll just make a piece that comes across the motor and bends down and I'll put two bolts in the firewall. That'll probably work pretty well because this firewall is actually pretty sturdy. And then obviously I'll have to hook the headlights back up. The wiring was set up for a, a plug-in headlight, not a, a screw terminal. So I'll have to fix that as well. Not a big deal, um, but pretty easy. I mean, it took me about 20 minutes to do the swap. I think it looks much better. Uh, Yellow and white tractors with a ghost grill may be my new favorite thing. I mean, it just, it just looks right. Like for some reason, it looks better than the, uh, the nose cone style grill on a yellow tractor. I've never done one before. I've seen other people do it, but I really like the way it looks. I don't even know if I'm going to paint that hood or not. I mean, it's a nice rusty hood. It's off a, a 1970 Suburban 12 that I sold last year. And I swapped it out for a 68 hood and grill because I like the 71s. And obviously it's got the side grill piece on it still. So this tractor's taken on a whole new personality of its own. And I'm really digging it so far. So there's no battery in it right now. I'm just going to push it back in the garage and put all these machines away that I had to take out to get to this guy but now I do have another 1970 hood and grill in the garage that I was thinking about putting on Mr. Plow here this is exactly the same tractor as that one this is a 74 I think 74 or 75 I think it's a 74 73 or 74 I'm not sure somewhere around there, 1973 or 74. Um, and it's exactly the same tractor as that guy there. So I have another hood and grill. I could actually make two yellow and white ghost grill tractors. And I kind of like the way they look better. And then I can keep these extra nose cones. The nose cone that was on that tractor, it had been repaired before, but they did a pretty good job on it. So that nose cone is really solid. The lower grill's in perfect shape on that. So you can never have too many extra nose cones. They tend to break when you really don't want them to or you don't expect it. So well, this turned out pretty cool. And with the big tires on the back, this will make a perfect loader machine. I actually like those tires for a loader even better than these D-stones that I have on this one. These have 
a more round tread profile. Even though those are loaded with washer fluid, I kind of like these tires better. These are a Carlisle, I forget what model they are, but I had those on tow mater for a long time. And uh, they just kind of look right at home on this tractor. And again, putting a loader on this thing, 261212 is the biggest tire you can run without the loader brackets hitting the tire. And uh, you want a really wide tire. I prefer a single wide tire to duels on a loader just because duels tend to get in the way. Um, it's And it gives people a false sense of security. They think a set of duels on the back of a loader will keep it from tipping over. But really, it just makes it into like a tricycle where the front end is really narrow and the rear end's really wide. It'll still tip over. So what I'm thinking of doing is taking the loader off of this SS18, putting it on this tractor. And part of the reason I want to do that, this SS18 has had the loader on it for several years now. I don't know, probably, I think since I got the loader, actually. And even when I had the loader, Lewis, uh, Hugh had lent me the loader years ago, back in 2013. I had it for a good six months. And I think I had it on this machine back then. But I had put that Roper nose cone on here because this had an unbroken nose cone. And originally the, uh, the hydraulic lines, these hydraulic lines were actually rubbing on the hood it turns out they're supposed this bracket here that's welded on the frame of the tractor or on the loader the lines are supposed to be in front of that and somebody had put them behind it so they were too close to the hood so i didn't want to break the nose cone before um so i put this roper nose cone on there and then i finally realized that i had to move the lines over i got those moved and now there's no issue with that but still i think i want to put this loader on that tractor that i just did the grill on and i'm tripping over here but i think i want to put the loader on this tractor here and then put the you know ss18 nose cone back on this guy get it all cleaned up tighten everything up use this one for mowing and or my second snow blowing machine maybe i'll even put my other cab on this tractor because i have another complete cab i just need to make a couple of brackets to mount it to the tractor so maybe i'll put the cab on this tractor and have two 18 horse own and uh, snow blowing machines so i think that's the plan and the only thing i might need to do to this tractor is actually i may take the fenders off of the ss18 and put them on this tractor if i do put the loader on it because these fenders i bashed really hard i bent them around this this weight box to get the weight box to fit on the tractor so if i'm going to put these um if i'm going to take this weight box off of the, this tractor and put the loader on this tractor i'll need the weight box on here but i don't want to wreck these fenders because they're like perfect so if i take these fenders and put them on that tractor and take those fenders and put them ah mosquito take those fenders and put them on this tractor then i won't have to bend them all up anymore i can always paint those before i put them on here and then like you know paint them with uh a good cat yellow and then throw dirt on them to make them match the rest of the tractor or something like that but anyway that's my plan and it's a good one i think so thanks again for tuning in to another edition of cranky motorsports i promised you guys some more tractor work uh that's really i think where my well my channel started with cars and trucks and then morphed into tractors and then morphed into cars and then morphed back into tractors um but really again all things with motors that's what i like and that's what i i like to tinker on in my free time so finally doing a tractor update and there's going to be more to come i i was going to post a bunch of footage in my last video but I'm probably going to be selling two more tractors, maybe two. Um, maybe one of my SS16s I might be selling, uh, the one that I used to call the $40 SS16. Haven't decided yet, either that one or the other SS18 that I bought with the half a loader on it two years ago. I haven't decided. I really need to look at them and figure out which one's a little bit... <coughs> Excuse me. I basically want to figure out which one I like less. And then I may put one of those up for sale. Both of them need a little work. The $40 SS16 needs a brake band. And no, I'm not going to sell it for 40 bucks. That's what I paid for it. Um, but that one needs a brake band. And then the SS18, I have to put basically back together. That one, if I end up selling the SS18, I'll probably end up putting a 16-horse Onan on that frame. 
only because I'm not giving away any of my 18 horse BGMS motors. They're my favorite Onans. They run phenomenal. They have oil filters in them, so I don't want to get rid of them. But anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of Cranky Motorsports. Thanks for watching. God bless America. Have a great day. Get out there and tinker on stuff. You know, like the guys on Roadkill say, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be good. Just get out there and tinker on something. It just has to be good enough. And that's what we're all about here on Cranky Motorsports. Having fun, wrenching on stuff, fixing it, driving it around, having fun, and keeping old iron alive. Have a great night. <laughs>